हेलो सल्प रिवर कोड सल्प लाइट हेलो हेलो
Justice Mohan M. Shantana Gowda has greatly contributed to the legal fraternity and indeed words would fall short to praise his lordships towards his contributions to the legal fraternity and to the society at large. Well, you will all agree with me, he was indeed a great human being and a role model personality. So it's a beautiful contribution, his values forward on behalf of uh, the Advocates Association High Court of Karnataka Tharwad Bench. I am Shankar Prakash, extending a very, very warm welcome to all of you and to the honourable judges on the stage. So please put your hands together and uh, hearty welcome to all of you. We would also like to acknowledge the presence of uh, High Court judges, district judges, distinguished judicial officers, advocates, government officials and importantly the future generation students from different law schools have also been are also here and friends from the print and electronic media have come here in large numbers. I would also like to extend a warm welcome to all of you. And as we all know, Justice M. Shantana Gaurabha admired Vachanas always and Vachana seems to be a part of his many of his speeches. So as a celebrating the life of uh, Mohan M. Shantana Gaurabha, we would like to start this stage program with the Vachana. And uh, I would request uh, Dr. Uh, Jaimuri Janamishetti, the Head of the Department of Music Division, uh, Central University of Gulbarga, Karnataka, for the first time.
thank you very much, Dr. Jaydevi Janakshetty and team for the soulful rendering of the vachana. We would also like to acknowledge the presence of the Honorable former Chief Minister of Karnataka, Shri Jaydevi Shetty. Welcome to you, sir. Well, ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture, I would request Honorable Mr. Justice Anand Ramananda Hegde, Judge High Court of Karnataka, for the opening remarks and welcome. Distinguished Lordships on the dais, of the dais, learned senior advocates, learned government advocates, learned advocates, ladies and gentlemen. In May 1980, when the Karnataka University announced the final year law examination results, one of the senior advocates in Darwad was elated. The reason was obvious and simple. His son stood second to the university and father saw him, saw him a flourishing advocate to take care of his chamber. But father was trained under IG grade order. So father gave an advice to his son, you get trained under IG grade order. IJ Hiragaudar is considered to be one of the finest trial court lawyers Karnataka has ever produced. So the son readily agreed to join the chambers of IJ Hiragaudar. After one year, son said, I will go to Bangalore and practice in Bangalore. Father said, no. Son was not relenting. Son insisted, I will practice in High Court. Father said, you have just completed one year. You practice for another 4-5 years in Dharwad. Any high court bench will be established in Dharwad. You commence your high court practice in Dharwad. That was the advice of the father. This was not palatable to the son. The son said, why should I wait for the high court bench to come to my place? Let me go to the place where the high court is functioning. Let me go to Bangalore. The father said, no. But again, son insisted. Then father had to give up. Father reluctantly gave consent to the son to practice in Bangalore, but he put a caveat. He said, you won't get any financial support, you won't get any professional support from my side. The father thought the caveat would work. And we all know, sometimes the caveat doesn't serve its purpose. The son was determined. He didn't deter the son. The son said, let me go to Bangalore. With just 1,700 rupees in his pocket, the son set off to Bangalore. He didn't forget to pack his bedding. The reason is he was not sure as to his accommodation. Son went to Bangalore, found a small accommodation, shared a small single room with another struggling advocate who was trying to make his mark in Bangalore. But contingency plan was always there. Son was so determined not to return to Dharwad. In the event he is not sustaining in the profession, he had plan B. He had spoken to a merchant or a businessman in Avenue Road who had promised a job of an accountant. The hard work, the talent, the determination ensure that the son or that young lawyer need not go to Avenue Road seeking employment. The lawyer joined the office of Sri Shivarat Party, one of the leading lawyers in Bangalore at that point of time, who later on became the judge of the Supreme Court. He was there in his chamber for three years. Later, he set up his independent practice. Very soon, he picked up his practice. And he was extremely popular among the clients. More importantly, he was extremely popular among the advocates. Noticing his talent, noting, noticing his leadership qualities, some of his colleagues suggested him to contest for the Bar Council election. He contested and won the election with ease. He was the member of the Karnataka State Bar Council. He was the Vice Chairman of the Karnataka State Bar Council from 91 to 93. And from 95 and 96, he was the Chairman of the Karnataka State Bar Council. During his tenure, 
the Karnataka State Bar Council introduced many programs that help the young lawyers to gain foothold in the profession. From 1999 to 2002, he served as State Public Prosecutor. Just look at the saga of success of this young lawyer. He had determined not to go back to his native place. He stepped out of the comfort zone of his father's office. He stepped out of the comfort zone of his native place. He went to Bangalore despite there was opposition by the father and did it all on his own. You all know that at the very young age of 45, he became the judge of the Karnataka High Court. He served as the judge of the Karnataka High Court for 16 long years. In 2016, he was elevated as the chief justice of Kerala High Court. And in 2017, he was the judge of the Supreme Court of India. As a lawyer, he occupied almost all important positions. Vice Chairman, Chairman and State Deputy. And as a judge, again, occupied almost all coveted positions in judiciary. And no more for guessing, I am referring to late Justice Mohan Shantan Gowder. He is the son of the soil. <laughs> the most admiring quality of Justice Shantan Gowder is his simplicity. Simplicity was so natural to him, it was not separable from him. And in addition to that, his sense of humor, his wit, his courtrooms have witnessed his funny bun. He was witty and humorous even outside the court. I can recollect two incidents where I was also target of his uh, leg pulling habit. Once he had come to Sirsi as an administrative judge of North Kanda district, I was practicing in Sissi court then. After breakfast with the lawyers, we were having conversation with him. I just noticed that he had reduced a little bit. I thought he was on diet. I put a question to him. Sir, sorry, dear Allah, diet Martai dear Allah. He looked straight into my eyes and said, You know, Ani Avar Sorte Tena. Ani Avar Diet Martai Tena. That's how he responded in his. Uh, Typical North Karnataka accent. Then in 2016, there was a central government lawyers conference in Cochin. Many of us central government advocates participated in that function. Justice Shantanagot was the chief guest. He invited the central government advocates from Karnataka for morning breakfast. We all attended. I was one among them. It was the, one of the most lavish breakfast table I have ever seen. I could really notice that he is an extremely good host. Then after the breakfast, again we are having a light conversation. Again he thought of pulling my leg. Then pointing his fingers to me and referring to the advocates, he said. Probably he was aware that I was practicing in Sissi as well as in Darwad. He Trial court will practice and high court will practice. Trial court will practice and high court will practice. Trial court will practice and high court will practice. That's how he used to pull the legs of the advocates around him used to keep the atmosphere lively and uh, he always believed in one statement of Martin Luther King which he often quoted, if you can't fly, you run, if you can't run, you try to walk and if you can't walk, you try to crawl but ensure that you are moving. This philosophy he believed in and he demonstrated it. As a Supreme Court judge, his health was not permitting him to discharge his full functions. Despite that, to the best of his ability, Almost three months prior to his untimely device, he worked as a Supreme Court judge, heard the cases, delivered the judgments. If you look at his judgments, one thing is apparent. Anybody can tell that he is a judge who always believed that there is always scope and room for application of rules of equity in addition to law. It is my proud and uh, it is my proud privilege to introduce Justice Mohan Shantan Gowda to this function. I am aware of the time constraint because the function is uh, delayed on account of flight delay. I am extremely grateful to the Bar Association. It is rightly captioned in our hearts forever and always celebrating the rights of Moon Shantan Gowda. If you look at this life journey, this is a life worth celebrating. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you, Justice Mohan.
Thank you, Honorable Mr. Justice Anand Ramana today for your words. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Honorable Mr. Justice Mohan M. Shantanagauda used to advise always young lawyers not to take unnecessary tension and don't compare yourself with others. If you work hard, stay focused and stay on the good track, nothing will stop you and uh, luck will come your way and you will reach the pinnacle of life. Indeed, a great man. At this juncture, I would request the dignitaries on the dais to kindly move to the left-hand side and offer floral presents. I would request the family of uh, uh, Justice Shantanagauda also to join in this uh, noble endeavor of uh, showering of uh, petals onto the portrait. It's a very important uh, moment uh, carrying on as Justice M. Mohan M. Shantanagauda in our hearts forever and always. And today, we are indeed, indeed celebrating the values of uh, Mohan M. Shantanagauda, which he lived through, advised to the society, and importantly, has motivated thousands and thousands of uh, personalities to become what they are today in today's life. And now, I would request uh, the dignitaries and the family members to offer uh, floral tribute. I would also request uh, Honorable Mr. Justice Phoenix Sir and Honorable Mr. Justice Dinesh Maheshwari, Honorable Mr. Justice Vyar Gawai, Honorable Mr. Justice A.S. Bopanna, Honorable Mr. Justice Kigwe and uh, Honorable Mr. Justice Ritraja Basti to kindly participate in this. Sincere thanks to all the dignitaries and staff, and of course the family members of uh, Justice Monim Shantanagar. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Honorable Mr. Justice Monim Shantanagar was so concerned about a litigant's personal liberty that his lordship, in the case of M. Ravindran versus Intelligence Officer observed that the magistrates have the obligation to inform an accused of his right to avail default bail when it accrues and subsequent filing of charge sheet or application seeking extension of time will not defeat the right to seek default bail once it has accrued, of which Justice Vinit Saran was indeed a part of. At this juncture, it's my privilege and pleasure to request Honorable Mr. Justice Vinit Saran, former Judge Supreme Court of India, to address all of us. Give your surgeon a swagat kiji, Honorable Mr. Justice. Namaskar. Dignitaries and my friends and my brothers on the dais and off the dais, Mrs. Uh, Shantrugarana Bhavi and other family members of uh, my dear friend Mohan Chantamwarda. Judicial officers present here, my friend, lawyers, most of whom I recognize and some I don't, but uh, they are all dear to me, and ladies and gentlemen. We are here to celebrate the wonderful life led by late Mohan Shantanam Bhatta, who was a dear friend of mine. He had a wonderful life, I would say, but I had the 
good fortune of only joining him at a very late stage in uh, 2015 when I joined as a judge of uh, Karnataka High Court in Bangalore. And he was the first person who received me well and became very intimate to me. We had uh, adjoining chambers in the High Court and uh, most of the time he would come over to my chamber or I would go to his chamber. That was only one of the only chambers that I used to visit regularly and have a cup of coffee with him and share our thoughts. <coughs> what I found about him was that he was a very friendly and a very compassionate person. I, it's, it's, as I said, I came to know him very late in life, but it's not the, uh, as I said, it's not the length of uh, friendship, it's the quality of friendship. And I must uh, say that we, in very short time, we became very intimate and very close to each other. And uh, although I was there in uh, Bangalore only for a year, but we remained in touch regularly. He came to me, uh, he uh, came to Allahabad for, my, for the function of my daughter from Delhi, when he was there in Delhi. And thereafter also, when we came to Delhi, when uh, I also joined Delhi uh, Supreme Court, we had a small group of four, um, uh, four judges, one, my brother, um, Justice Bhushan Dabai, myself, Justice Reddy, and my brother, uh, Mohan Chantrangata. We used to meet every uh, week or in every 10 days, in the evenings and uh, have a good time. We had a very, very um, close, closely knit friendship, uh, the four of us. Just as Reggie was also supposed to come, but uh, unfortunately he's not here today. Well, <coughs> from what I could say, see, he was a complete family man. He always was very attached to his uh, children and uh, Shiva and his daughter, both uh, very nice children. Um, um, uh, very nice children. I know them. They've been brought up very well. They are, he was very attached to them. And what I find is that not only at home but in court also, he was very compassionate, very friendly. I had the good fortune of uh, sharing a bench with him in Karnataka just for a few days, and uh, also in. Uh, and also in uh, the Supreme Court. Well, his love for me was, uh, I can just uh, tell you, his love for me was such that uh, when he got unwell, he requested the Chief Justice of India to constitute a bench, um, uh, uh, his bench with me, so that uh, he could be comfortable and uh, uh, he, he could be comfortable and free with me. Well, I must say, even when he was not well, he used to take up the matters, hear the matters, and insist on writing judgments. I used to tell him that, uh, let, let me write the judgments, why are you taking the trouble? He used to say that that's a way I can keep myself busy and uh, away from the thoughts of uh, my illness. Well, he was a great person. Right at the end, we were in touch. We uh, used to meet regularly. I used to walk over to his house uh, very frequently. And when he was well, he also used to come over uh, regularly. And our understanding was we just uh, across, just opposite, uh, and on Motila and Nehru Mark, uh, houses, houses were just opposite each other. And our understanding was if I used to go and visit him, we used, I used to walk down. And then he would uh, walk down to my gate and see me off. And similarly, when he used to come to my place, I used to um, see him off right till his gate. That was the understanding and we used to chat uh, at the gate for quite some time. Besides what we uh, used to chat uh, while having coffee or other things. Well, his life, uh, Justice Hegde has already told that uh, he began his career 
His father was a lawyer, but he wanted to be independent and he wanted to um, prove himself and be an uh, advocate in Bangalore instead of uh, practicing in, with his father in Dharva. <coughs> well, I must uh, definitely say that with his hard work, he not only got the affection and love of uh, the advocates when he was a lawyer and uh, was elected to the Bar Council and also as chairman of the Bar Council. But as a judge also, he, which he became at a young age of 45 or maybe just below 45. And uh, he, young, uh, he, in fact, uh, won over the hearts of all the lawyers, which I could very well see when I was uh, a judge in Bangalore over here that all the lawyers were very affectionate and very loving towards him and so was his, the same position in Delhi. I had the opportunity of sitting with him for about four months and all the lawyers were very happy, he was very jovial, he used to have uh, light, lighter moments on the bench which normally one would think would be very serious but he used to carry everybody uh, with him and uh, and, uh, and the bar was extremely happy with him. He is the son of the soil and uh, his popularity can be seen over here with so many of uh, you are turning up for this uh, function to celebrate the wonderful life of uh, Mr. Justice Mohan Chantamurta which I think uh, was uh, ended uh, before time but he had a a wonderful life, he uh, enjoyed every bit, bit of it and I wish uh, that uh, he is in peace wherever he is now. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Honorable Justice Mohan M. Shantan Gowdhury indeed won the hearts of each and every one in his life. Thank you Honorable Mr. Justice Vinit Saran, former Judge Supreme Court of India for your address. Thank you sir. Well, ladies and gentlemen, office is a very important and an integral part of everyone's life. Honorable Mr. Justice Mohan M. Shantanagaudar always treated each and every member of his office as a family. He ensured that the office was a very safe space and each and every member of his office was safe mentally, physically and emotionally. That was the great quality of him. At this juncture, I would request the Honorable Mr. Justice Dinesh Maheshwari Ji, Judge Supreme Court of India, to address all of us. Madhugane Swagati Singh, Honorable Mr. Justice Dinesh Maheshwari Ji. Dignitaries uh, on the dais of the dais. Respected Bhaviji, Madam Shantan Goddard, my respected family members of Justice Shantan Goddard, uh, ladies, gentlemen, everybody present here. Being here in Dharwar uh, again, uh, we need to go revived the memories of uh, the sweet memory of Justice Mohan and Shantan Goddard. And uh, relive or connect, well, it's a great privilege for me. I'm thankful to the family of Justice Shantan Goddard having uh, given me uh, these moments uh, to revive all I can or I could here in Dharwar. Something was uh, being uh, indicated by my previous speakers about uh, uh, Justice uh, Shantan Goddard's uh, simplicity, friendliness, congeniality, the uh, warm heartedness the great hospitality. In fact, uh, if I could start my few words uh, with uh, a comment that uh, 
Justice uh, Mohan and Shantan Gaudar had uh, a, a wonderful and a singular quality of uh, making himself a habit of anybody whom he will meet. And the senior person from Karnataka High Court adorning the seat in the Supreme Court. So uh, I sought an appointment. Uh, he was kind enough to give me a, an appointment immediately on asking. And when I went there meeting him for the first time, the first thing he did, and that became my habit, that's why I was saying, the first thing he did was the namaste was that uh, will come on the dining table, we'll have something to eat and thereafter we'll talk. So that is how it started. Uh, my colleagues here in uh, Karnataka High Court and my registry people also, some of them are now adorning the bench, uh, were uh, uh, sometimes uh, finding my one particular uh, call or requirement a bit too extra that every day uh, as soon as after completing the court hours I'll sit in the chamber before doing all other things including administrative work. I'll call for uh, a cup of bonda soup. In fact I share with all of you that bonda soup was the habit well inculcated from Justice Mohan Shantan Gorda right at day number one. When uh, I met him first day, first thing I did, I, I was taken to was his dining table and that bonda soup, that was the first time I had uh, the privilege of having it and uh, believe me, that habit continued, this continues and this continues still and I hope to have it today also. Anyway, friends, uh, Having uh, had the privilege of uh, working closely thereafter with Justice Shantan Gordon, I found that uh, it had been a long circle of connect with Justice Shantan Gordon. A few things were being talked about, uh, his uh, care for his office. I could see that uh, those elements and uh, that depth in Justice Shantan Gaudar was purely reflective of his uh, senior and mentor, Justice uh, Shivraj Patil Sahib. I had had the privilege and the opportunity to practice uh, as a young lawyer before Justice Patil when he was uh, our Chief Justice in Rajasthan High Court. I could see anybody meeting Justice Shantan Gaudar that uh, those great qualities, the depth, the simplicity of Justice Patil and then a distinct vision and also a depthful caring heart. Well, all those qualities were truly reflective in Justice uh, Shantan Gaudar and rather uh, they were there in abundance and he carried always them uh, very, very uh, means effectively forward, I would say. But behind the, all these qualities of a, a very easy, humorous person, a friend of friends, as uh, uh, his uh, dear friend just now shared with you, a uh, jovial person, behind that was an absolutely no-nonsense, serious professional, a serious judge, which anybody who has come in contact with him, has worked with him, could appreciate and could admire. 
Uh, of course, I got only three or four days uh, opportunities to share bench with Justice Shantan Gautam in the Supreme Court. But uh, they were truly reflective of the depth of the person, the seriousness of the law professional who, despite not m making anybody feel like well, his depth of knowledge or his depth of concern would unassumingly, without, uh, without making any show or uh, I would say theater about uh, his depth, he would deeply be concerned about the system, about the particular litigation, about the particular litigant, and of course, yes, the, the, the pains or sufferings, whatever, if they were there, projected before him. Uh, seeing him, uh, well, I, I felt, uh, reminding myself of uh, a story, a very little, small, quick story of a man complaining to the God about uh, the pain and suffering and uh, pleading it's to God the, so much of suffering that there, why don't you do something? The God said, yes, I have done something. I have sent you here. That is what just a Shantan God was. And uh, <laughs> yes, he was, uh, truly he is not amongst us, but uh, the, the great values the great work, the depth which, to which he has taken, the, a law professional's work would always be there, not only to be admired, but to, well, to be appreciated and to be taken forward. And I'm sure that here, uh, coming back to, yes, uh, I, I would definitely like to say a few words about uh, this uh, pious place, uh, Dharwad, also. In fact, uh, I had, uh, when I joined uh, Karnataka, uh, after joining at Bangalore, uh, my, one of my first uh, items on agenda was to visit the benches of uh, the High Court at Harvard and uh, uh, Kalburgi, both places. So, uh, within uh, four or five days, immediately after joining here, uh, the first thing, uh, what I planned was to visit uh, Harvard. So my colleague, uh, Judge Justice Patil, B.S. Patil, was uh, uh, accompanying me. We came here uh, first day at, the, at Harvard. Before that, I had never uh, visited this place. And again, this uh, Harvard itself has, again, that propensity that uh, value attached and the biasness all around, that Tharwad also will make yourself a habit. And thereafter, well, I was looking for every opportunity to visit Tharwad. And uh, I have, I can, I can very <coughs> means proudly say I visited Tharwad more than once. And one of the programs I remember, uh, I shared uh, Dias with uh, Justice Bond and Shantan Gordon when uh, he organized a lecture. Uh, he was always organizing a lecture and uh, that particular year that lecture was delivered by Justice Bodhiyal, if I remember correctly. So in the memory of his late father. So he was the son of the soil, always connect, having a great connect. And then I could see his connect with the roots of Tharwar at least uh, twice uh, traveling on road from uh, Dharwad to the airport Hubli, uh, will sharing the vehicle with uh, Justice Mohan Shantan Gauder. He will uh, uh, inform me about the variety of the things all around Dharwad, his connect, uh, his connect with the people, his connect with the land, his connect with the ethos of Dharwad. And uh, I could see, I could see here, in uh, the meaningful uh, faces, the serious faces, the proud faces all around here in this hall uh, who are proudly remembering the son of the soil, Justice Mohan and Shantan Goddard. And uh, 
I can from my own experience say that uh, he never lost his connect to his roots and that was one of the greatness, the great qualities of uh, the gentleman, uh, what he was. I had noticed in him those uh, qualities uh, which, uh, if uh, I could say in the form of uh, like grammar, that he would convert a noun into a verb, that is an, a particular concept of theory. Say for example, integrity. Uh, he, would, he was the person uh, who was uh, converting that concept of integrity into the active work of doing the right things. If you talk of innovation, he was a person who was always looking at the things differently. And that is how meaningfully uh, he contributed, he enriched everybody's life, he enriched everybody who came in contact with him. Friends, uh, when uh, they say, and uh, there was an anonymous uh, quote that uh, if uh, you are here on this earth, well, when you leave, well, let it be having a, this earth be a little more beautiful, a little more human, a little more lovable, a little more fragrance being there, a little more clarity being there for the unknown guests who will be coming after you. Justice Mohan and Shantan Goddard truly lived that life, made the tomorrow better for us. Let us, well, well, uh, well in his memory, well, make ourselves sure that we will always be working for a better tomorrow. Thank you so very much. Honorable Mr. Justice Shantan Goddard was indeed a thorough professional. And more than that, he always had a special love for Dharavada. He never lost touch with his old friends. He ensured that he visited the families of his friends whenever he was in Dharavada. And such was the quality of his man. Thank you, Honorable Mr. Justice Dinesh Maheshwari, the Supreme Court of India, for your comments. Thank you, sir. I will now request Honorable Mr. Justice B.R. Govai, the Supreme Court of India, to address all of us. Chief Justice of Kerala High Court 
and the bar association made him a farewell. He quoted Confucius' his speech, and I quote, So simple it is to live, so simple it is to love, so simple it is to smile, but so difficult it is to be simple, and I conclude. Bowen Bai was a persona synonymous with simplicity. Simplicity personified, simple, simplicity dignified. As a matter of fact, I came in contact with him at a very late stage. Though I had heard about, a lot about him from one of my colleagues, this is Naidu, who came from Kerala and who had an occasion to be closely associated with him. But I got an opportunity to meet him personally only after I was elevated to the Supreme Court in 2019. There was already a club of three of our brothers. This is Mohan Bhai, Vinit Bhai and Subhaj Bhai. And it is said that uh, before you reach a particular place, your reputation reaches earlier. And they thought that I was a fit person to join their club and inducted. I was the youngest member, but the bond which four of us shared in this short period of two years or more is one of the thickest bonds that I have developed in the life of more than 60 years that I have lived. He was so simple. He had no ears about he being a judge of the Supreme Court. Whenever I went to meet him, he was always clad in lungi and never felt shy of coming in lungi even out of his house. He had, he had a sympathy for the socially and economically disadvantaged marginal sections of the society. And that is reflected in many of the judgments I would take long on that because I know that it's the program is already delayed. But his contribution to the Indian judicial system will always be remembered and I will only quote few of his judgments which will show his commitment to the social and economic equality. In Nandin Biometrics versus Ambika Devi, the farmers had sued the seed companies which had promised huge returns and the farmers were due to invest huge amounts on account of the seed companies refusing to promise the promises made. The consumers, the farmers went into went to the consumer court. The seed company took an objection that the farmers had purchased the seeds for the commercial activity and therefore this will not come into the definition of the consumer as provided in the Consumers Act. He said that the farmers in the country are one of, one of the most imperial sections of the society. They are lured to enter into such transactions and if a poor farmer by giving a narrow and pragmatic, pedantic meaning to the word consumer is denied a little sucker of approaching the consumer forum, which is a forum provided for speedy justice, then we will defeat the very purpose of the enactment, which is for providing a speedy justice to the consumers, to the citizens of the country. He said that if a purposeful construction is not made, the very purpose and object of the beneficial enactment would stand defeated. Again in the case of Vilavati Kirtilal Medical Trust, a question arose as to whether the Vilavati Hospital in Bombay, which had purchased flats for housing nurses and doctors, were consumer in so far as its relation with the builders or not. Vilavati Hospital had sued against the builder on account of deficiency in services. Again, an argument was advanced that 
Niravati Trust was engaged in the business. It was providing medical services for return and therefore it will not fall in the definition of the consumer. He said providing accommodation to the nurses is one of the measures, welfare measures which an employer is required to take for its employees. And providing such amenities to the employees would in turn benefit the ultimate patients who would be provided services from the nurses, from the doctors who are residing in the nearby locality. And therefore he held that a parenting construction is not in tune with the modern approach. The modern approach requires a pragmatic approach. The pragmatic construction which is in tune with the purpose of the act and a construction which advances the purpose of the act should always be preferred. The learned computer has already referred to the case of M. Ravindran to which my elder brother Justice Saran was a party at the judges bench. He said that an importance of liberty which is enshrined in Article 21 of the Constitution cannot be denied to a citizen on a pedantic or technical interpretation. He said that if a right is available to a prisoner on non-filing of charge sheet of either 68 day or 98 day and he files an application and avails of the remedy merely because there is a formality in availing the bail by few days and during that period if the charge sheet is filed the right which is already accrued cannot be taken away. He held that the purpose is in tune with the enshrined Article 21 which is one of the fundamental basic structures of the Constitution and any argument contrary to that would defeat the very basic structure of the Constitution. But per contra, if we refer to his judgment in Rekha Sankar Sengar, which was dealing with the prevention of consumption and prevention of PNGT Act, he said that whenever it was found that the accused were conducting themselves for conducting prenatal tests and encouraging sex determination so as to prove a way for human infanticide, such an act has to be dealt with a stern act. He said that the purpose of the act is to remove the discrimination between a male and a female child and any such act which promotes a discrimination against the female child has to be strictly implemented and no leniency should be seen in such cases. Then in the case of Krishnalal Chawla, he looks at the menace of frivolous complaints under section 156.3 and the frivolous FIRs and he discusses the various provisions in the CRPC and issues certain guidelines for the trial courts to eliminate the frivolous complaints and the frivolous FIRs so as to save the innocent citizens from being harassed by the litigants. In the case of Imani versus State of UP, we look at his practical side taking into consideration the ground realities. When a man filed a petition seeking a relief of his girlfriend who was lodged in Nari Niketan, he held that the girl was above 18 and no law can enforce or continue to enforce or to stay in the Nari Niketan if she was willing to stay with her boyfriend and therefore he issued a writ of habeas corpus directing the Nari Niketan he was a great human being. There are many things which can, which come to my mind, but on account of paucity of time, it will not be possible to refer to one of the, to many of them. I'll only refer to a short, one small incident. 
we have many servant quarters in the Luton zone. But he had kept one room in a servant's quarter, specially reserved for the children of his servants who were taught there. He said that they require a comfortable atmosphere wherein, wherein they could be tutored, wherein they could be tuitioned and studied. Such a human approach after reaching at such a high position is a very rare in this times. He was a great human being, relentless, ever smiling. We lost him early. I still recollect that day of 24th of April, a year and month ago, at around 11 o'clock, Shiv Prasad rang me. Thereafter, I and Vinit Bhai went to Vedanta. But I can say, I, when we saw his remains, we thought that he was still in smile. We have lost a great lawyer. His career as a SC Supreme Court judge had just started blossoming. Even in last months, when his health was not permitting him, still he continued to write his judgments. And many of those judgments are landmark judgments. We have lost a great lawyer, a great judge, and above all, a great human being. But we are not here to mourn him. We are not here to mourn his death. All of us are here to celebrate his achievements, to, ce to celebrate the life that he lived. It is not how long you live, it is how you live. Mohan Bhai, you are no more. But your judgments will always make your present immortal. Your ever smiling and joyful face can never be erased from the hearts of all those who knew you. Your empathy for the Ionauts, your sympathy for the needy will make you omnipresent. You will be always present in our hearts. I come from Maharashtra. We have always had a prayer for Marathi. We used to meet in the in the morning before we went to our each other's courts. He was one of the early birds who used to arrive there in the conference room. And every morning always he used to greet me with a big smile. Pushan Bhai, Kasai. will always miss that smile. There is a saying in Marathi, Jo avade sarvanna, tochi avade devala, the one who is loved by all, is loved also by God. God loved him so much, that he has taken us, very early, at a very early stage. But Mohan Bhai, you have become a God, Bless all of us from the place where you are. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Honorable Mr. Justice Mohan Shantanagowder knew the hardships of the common man. And uh, he, through his landmark judgments, he always ensured that uh, they are not exploited. So that was his concern towards the society. Uh, thank you, Honorable Mr. Justice B. R. Kawai, Judge Supreme Court of India, for your comments. Thank you, sir. I will now request Honorable Mr. Justice uh, A. S. Bopanna, Judge Supreme Court of India, to address us. But we will ask for Honorable Mr. Justice Bopanna.
at the outset, let me also support the application filed by Justice Gavai seeking condonation of delay for uh, having come late. Though we are not responsible, we were at the mercy of somebody. Uh, but I know we have kept you waiting. We are sorry. Dignitaries on the dais, of the dais, family members of uh, let Justice Shantan Yoda, <coughs> advocate friends, and all others who have gathered here. In fact, while uh, addressing the, the program which was held in Bangalore to pay a tribute to Justice Shantan Gowda, in my uh, speech I had in fact mentioned saying that uh, when achievers like him pass away, instead of paying tribute, we should be celebrating their life because they have left something behind for others to follow. And the achievements of Justice Shantan Gowda has been referred to by the other speakers. I will not be saying too much on that. I would only try to recollect the association I had with him. Though we practiced in the same bar in Bangalore, because initially I did not have much acquaintance with him. All that I had seen him was because we had a small group who was to meet for lunch near the KGID building uh, in the car parked there. At that time, some a group of advocates used to pass going to coffee board canteen there. And of course, we did not know most of them, because at that stage, not even having come to Darwad with the bench not being there, when there was a kind of, each one used to have our own group whom we knew and would not know the other. But uh, one thing what at least I remember is, Every time we heard somebody laughing very heartily, we knew it was the Bar Council Chairman passing across that side. He used to have his group joke with them, uh, laugh loudly, pass there, and that's how initially I knew him. But thereafter, because I saw him becoming a judge of the High Court, practiced before him, Thereafter, I was fortunate to be elevated. Initially, before uh, 2008, the bench at uh, Darwad happened. It was not much of an acquaintance, except that uh, we had the opportunity of sharing a full bench along with uh, Justice Shantan Gowda and Justice Nazir and myself were in the bench. That was the time actually when uh, I really got close to him. Good, but still, I mean, even today, like uh, my seniors have called him, somehow I have still not been able to call him a friend because till the end I respected him a little more than a friend and uh, that was how it went on. But the real acquaintance was there in the bench. And thereafter it was, when uh, 2008, uh, when the Darwad bench was inaugurated, almost I think for the second batch uh, to start, uh, uh, I mean, start the proceedings here, after the first batch had all come and gone. It was a batch where Jesse Shantan Gowder was there and uh, I was also in the bench. At that stage, we did not have the bungalows ready. It was just the guest house, so we had to stay in the guest house. We had a common uh, mess and uh, we used to stay in the rooms. That was the time I really uh, came to know Justice Shantan Gowda very closely. And uh, that's the reason today when I'm in uh, Dharwad, it really brings such nostalgic uh, memories of having spent time here 
and more particularly it was uh, at that stage there was a system where uh, two three slots were formed of the judges based on seniority and that same group used to almost go to the benches every time so we got the and i got the opportunity almost every time to be with him in the bench when we were there and naturally at those uh, that time when uh, the bungalows were not there it was a bachelor's party I mean, we were all uh, to ourselves funding for ourselves and uh, we needed each other more to and because walk walk in the campus was together evenings we used to be together after the court and i remember the first time when we came and uh, the first evening we were taking a walk to the valmi campus to uh, go in there somehow i don't know i sprained my leg and uh, the concern shown by justice shantan gowder the very next day i don't know from where it produced there was a person to come and uh, massage my leg the next few days were taken care of every evening uh, while going for the walk he used to come to my room find out whether he is massaging my leg till i was all right he took care of me and that's the way it uh, went on and uh, of course another thing which i should also mention every time we made sure i think it's called the dc canteen tuppada ulaki ah some canteen is to mention that he used to say his college days he used to enjoy that and therefore we should have it and he used to make sure that we get it every time and that's how we were together of course there after we went away to kerala and uh, again slightly we were the part and i distinctly remember it was uh, Three days, I mean, three years earlier to this day, 2019, around this time, I think just a Shantan Gowder was in the U.S. at this juncture, May 2019, and this was the time actually our elevation was in the pipeline. Just as Gawa and myself and the other two judges, almost. Uh, and because the recommendation had gone and he was aware almost every second day is to call up to find out what has happened and on the 24th the day of swearing in he made it a point to call up from there to say that i am missing your swearing in and uh, to wish me good luck that's the way we were close to each other and uh, of course having uh, started by saying that his life is to be celebrated i think every uh, person here who has come when the various fields from which people are here may be a former chief minister vice chancellor professors senior counsel from the supreme court senior counsel from the high courts and the eng bar and sure all of you have found him to be a role model and he would be remembered for the life he has lived let us remember the good things he has left behind for us to follow and keep celebrating his life it's normally said that people whom you love don't go away they live in your hearts he certainly is living in our hearts and let us celebrate his life thank you for giving him this opportunity thank you honorable mr justice he has given us for giving us more insights into the journey of uh, justice mohan shantanu gowder of his friendly nature and uh, taking care attitude thank you very much sir well ladies and gentlemen the advocate association uh, dharwad have uh, 
chronicled the life and journey of uh, Justice Mohan M. Shantanagaudar in a video. I request all of you to kindly relax, sit back and let's watch the video. Video please. Gandu Makala's Teachers Training School, Dharma. Grades 5 to 10 was at RLS High School, Dharma. His first year PUC to BS degree final year was at the Karnataka Science College, Dharma. He completed his BSc in 1977 by securing a first class. Justice Mohan N. Shantana Gaudan enrolled as an advocate on the 5th of September, 1980. He started his practice in Dharwad in the same year in the chambers of Shri I.G. Hire Gaudan. After a year of practice, Shri I.G. Hire Gaudan, Justice Mohan M. Shantana Gaudan came to Bangalore in 1981 and started his practice under Shri Shivaraj P. Pahi as then his lordship. In one instant, prior to joining the chambers of Shri Shivaraj V. Patil, Shri Shivaraj V. Patil asked Shri Mohan M. Shantana Gaudan how he would survive in Bangalore because new lawyers make very little money and that he had left his hometown to come and settle here. To this, the young Mohan M. Shantana Gaudan replied that after office hours that he would work in a grocery store until his practice picks up. To this, the amused Shivraj P. Patil said, You need not work in a grocery store at night. If you work hard enough in the office, the practice will pick up on its own. In May 1984, Justice Mohan M. Shantana Gaudan started his independent practice and within a short span of time gained huge popularity. He was a legal advisor to various educational institutions local bodies and cooperative societies specialized in civil, criminal and constitutional matters. Justice Mohan M. Shantana Gaudan was not only an active lawyer but also an active member of the bar. He was elected as the Vice Chairman of the Karnataka State Bar Council from 1991 to 1993. At a young age of 37, Justice Mohan M. Shantana Gaudan was elected as Chairman of the Karnataka State Bar Council from 1995 to 1996. Under his chairmanship, the Karnataka State Bar Council conducted a mega-seminar in Dharma, wherein the distinguished guests included legal stalwarts like Sri Nani Palkiwala, Sri Ram Jethmalani, Sri Soli Sarabji and Sri K.K. Denugopal, among others. From 1999 till January 2003, Justice Mohan M. Shankana Gaudan served as the State Public Prosecutor of the State of Karnataka and defended the state in many sensational criminal appeals and habeas corpus petitions. He appeared on behalf of the State of Tamil Nadu as their advocate in the High Court of Karnataka and defended the state during 1999 to 2002. Justice Mohan M. Shantana Gaudan was appointed as additional judge of the Karnataka High Court on 12th of May 2003 and was later sworn in as a permanent judge on the 24th of September 2004. He was the president of the Bangalore Mediation Centre and the Karnataka Judicial Academy. Justice Mohan M. Shantana Gaudan, on transfer to the High Court of Kerala, assumed charge as Acting Chief Justice on August 1, 2016. He was later sworn in as the Chief Justice of the High Court of Kerala 
on the 22nd of September 2016. Justice Mohan M. Shantana Gowdan was elevated as Judge of the Supreme Court of India on 17 February 2017, where he remained until his untimely death on April 24, 2021. In spite of his busy schedule, he would always make time for his family. He was very attached to his mother and his grandson. He is survived by his wife, Srimati Sunita Shantana Gaudan, son Sri Shiva Prasad Shantana Gaudan, daughter Pooja Shantana Gaudan, daughter-in-law Shweta Nagish, and grandson Siddhant Shantana Gaudan, an avid traveler. Whenever Justice Mohan M. Shantana Gaudar found time, he would travel to various parts of the country. His principle was to see your country first and thereafter other parts of the world. Whenever he would travel to other states or other countries, he would always make it a point to see the courts of that state or country. Justice Mohan M. Shantana Gaudar was known as a judge who spoke his mind. He never minced his words both in his judgments nor in his public address. He was also known for his sense of humor. Several of his colleagues at the bench and members of the bar have said that off the bench or on it, Justice Shantana Gowder had a great sense of humor. He brought liveliness to regular court proceedings. We would break into laughter along with other lawyers and the pressure of the proceedings was out. He was someone who would always encourage young junior counsels to argue. He would motivate them by giving them more time to argue, only to boost their confidence. He was always indulgent and always patient at his hearing. He was known for his humane approach towards the law. Several of his judgments bear truth to the same.
well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have all congregated here to celebrate the life of Mohan M. Shantanagaur. And I'm very sure you should all give a huge, huge round of applause. And uh, I'm not wrong in this. I, I, you all will accept me because we are here to celebrate the life of a man who led by example and lived by example. Yes, let's all give a standing ovation for Mohan M. Shantanagaur. I'd like to thank the dignitaries on the dais and all of you for this uh, gesture. Many of the group. I would now request Honorable Mr. Justice uh, A.K. Goel, former Judge, Supreme Court of India, and presently Chairman of the National Green Tribunal for his address. Namaskara. All the dignitaries on the dais and of the dais, distinguished guests. Mrs. Shantan Gowda, Mrs. Vinish Charan, other family members of Justice Shantan Gowda. We have already heard several speeches from uh, at least four, four on the Supreme Court judges who are very close to Justice Shantan Gowda. I would like to compliment Dharwad High Court Advocates Association for organizing this beautiful function to celebrate the life of Justice Shantan Gowda and also giving me this opportunity of, being, of uh, participating. Many of us think personally we were very close to him and I am also one of those privileged persons to claim that or feel that. Uh, I first met him only, I may have met him in Bangalore, but I met him closely when he came to Supreme Court in February 2017. Before that, I used to hear a lot about him. And we were in the same common lunch group. That's one close group in Supreme Court, having lunch together daily. That's how we came very close. We used to go for morning work at least on weekends together go for swimming also. So I got opportunity to observe him very, very closely and find highest qualities of a human being in him. It's a certainly a great loss to all of us that Justice Shantan Gauda is no more. But uh, I find this function to be very useful to inspire all present here by the memories of the life lived by him, of the highest values which he had in his life. Yes, there are people, there are meritorious people, there are learning people. Perhaps uh, there may be no doubt of it. There are honest people, hardworking people. There are people who excel, there are people who achieve, there are people who earn well, make big names, occupy high positions. But perhaps that is not enough. Justice Shantan Gauda was not merely a learned person or honest person or hardworking person or person who acquired high positions. He was much more. This is one side of what a person becomes, what a person acquires, or what qualities one a person has personally. The quality which distinguishes Justice Shantan Gauda is his concern for other sufferings. As a judge, as a human being, I found him always thinking of wiping the tears and removing the suffering of people, of improving the systems, of reforming the systems, of uh, being concerned how poor can be helped. So that is one great quality which I closely found in him, which will uh, make him uh, different from all others. 
and uh, Justice uh, uh, Gawain was referring to a judgment on Consumer Act. Yes, that's a very great judgment. But that's, that's only reflection of what his mental thought was. He was always concerned about giving an interpretation which will help a common man. As I said, there is no dearth of people who will know the law or the principles of interpretation. But he was the person who will give interpretations which will advance justice, justice to the common man. That was very close to his heart. So that is something, in my view, one, one distinguishing feature which uh, makes it necessary that we celebrate uh, his personality and be inspired by the memories of uh, his life. I don't want to take more time. Uh, it's very, I have various memories, but it is all, it will take, take time. And I don't want to wait, wait, make everyone wait. Uh, we have seen a small glimpse of his uh, life and also heard some stories about personally how he, uh, he was and I don't wish to take more time even though I had, I wanted to say many things but because of shortage of time I, I defer it for some other occasion. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Mr. Justice uh, Kikoel, uh, for your insights. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Justice uh, Shantan Gautam was indeed prolific in authoring judgments and has settled several substantial questions of law. At this juncture, it's my pleasure to request Honorable Mr. Justice Ritu Raja Basti, uh, Chief Justice High Court of Karnataka, to address all of us. Madhugale, how will you welcome the Chief Justice of Karnataka? Yes. Good afternoon. Ilaregu Namaskara. Honorable Mr. Justice Dinesh Meshwari, Just Supreme Court of India. Honorable Mr. Justice B. I. Gavai, Just Supreme Court of India. Honorable Mr. Justice A. S. Bopanna, Just Supreme Court of India. Honorable Mr. Justice A. K. Goel, former Just Supreme Court of India, and presently the chairperson, National Greens Traveler. Honorable Mr. Justice Vineet Saran, former Judge, Supreme Court of India. Honorable Mr. Justice Ravi Valimath, Chief Justice, Madhya Pradesh High Court. Honorable Mr. Justice Subhash Ali, former Judge of High Court of Karnataka and former Uplo Bayukt of Karnataka. Sisters and brother judges, Mr. Prabhuling K. Navadgi, learned Advocate General, Mr. Navadgi, Narangi Lande, Solicitor General of India, Mr. Suresh Pudidagadi, President, Darwad, Advocate Bar Association, Darwad, Mr. Shivshankar Gauda, Registrar General, Lenin Senior Advocates, Lenin Members of the Bar, Family of Late, Justice Mohan M. Shantagora, Ladies and Gentlemen. It gives me immense pleasure to be part of this vibrant gathering. I am extremely happy to be in amongst the galaxy of Honorable Judges of Apex Court and the High Court of Karnataka. I am constrained to speak today by two ways. Being the last speaker, all my predecessors have given you the details of the great life which late Justice Mohan Shanti Gauda had lived. I had not worked with him and it was my misfortune that I could not get the opportunity to work with him. But that is not an impediment to speak about the great life which he lived. Very likely it has been said that he lives in our hearts forever and always. That is correct that he will always live in our hearts always and always and forever. I pay my sincere 
tribute to the great soul. As you all know, the great qualities late Mohan Shanti Gauda had and all the lawyers, they have an example before them to follow and I will request the young lawyers to be following the great qualities that this great man had. As a lawyer, as a judge, as a person, as a human being, in every aspect of the life, he had lived a great life. And I feel that I have no words to add whatever has been said today about late Mohan Shanti Gauraji. I will only add few of his saying which I had noted in my speech on the transfer of his lordship to Kerala while delivering his speech in court hall number one on the farewell arranged by bar council he said duty of a judge to decide the case and in doing so he may enunciate the principles of law but not exhibit one's knowledge when not needed in the case i am also aware that the litigant is more interested in the final result then about the erudition of the judge. Such belief of mine has shortened my judgments. This is what, how he thought about it and how the judgment is to be written. This is, he had said in his farewell speech. He believed that there was nothing high or low in occupations. It was honesty and sincerity that decided the merits of the means of livelihood and believed in the principles of Kayaka propounded by great saint and social reformer Vasavna, who propounded that any work which is undertaken for the good of the world and which is performed well is Kayaka. I, he gave highest priority to unimpeachable character, upright conduct, politeness and pleasing manners and clean habits in society. Once late Honorable Mr. Justice Mohan Shanti Gauda said, and I quote, whenever I look at my watch, I remember that watch reminds me to watch my work, to watch my words, to watch my action, to watch my thought, and to watch my character, and to watch my art. Everyone should remember that if we do not rise above the things of the world, they will rise above us. This is how he thought about the life and this is how he thought the life has to be lived. Finally, I would like to quote one of the famous teachings of Swami Vivekananda, which late Mohan Shanti Gora used to often refer and I quote, Let us not think of going to heaven after death. Let us create heaven during our lifetime. The life and deeds of late Mohan Shanti Gora are lessons to the present generation, especially to the young lawyers and judges. It is a great idea to celebrate his life and I wish that such functions are held every year in memory of the great soul. I sincerely thank the organizers for organizing this function. I also thank the organizers for inviting me to share my thoughts with you all. Thank you. Thank you all. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Mr. Justice uh, Rituraja Vasti has called upon the entire advocate fraternity to imbibe the value system of Justice Mohan and Shantari. Let's all thank Honorable Mr. Justice uh, Rituraja Vasti. Thank you, Well, ladies and gentlemen, Honorable Justice Mohan M. Shantanagauda used to tell in his own unique way the do's and don'ts for new judges. 
And his first lesson to them was, whenever you get angry in the court, you narrate a joke and clear the atmosphere. That was his great quality, ladies and gentlemen. At this juncture, I would request Honorable Mr. Justice Krishna S. Dikshit, Judge High Court of Karnataka, for his remarks. Pandukale, Vedika Geswagatasi, Honorable Mr. Justice Krishna S. Dikshit. ಒಂದ್ಸರಿ ಹೈಕೋರ್ಟ್ 
ಧಾರವಾಡದಲ್ಲಿ ಗುಲ್ಬರ್ಗದಲ್ಲಿ ಬೆಂಚಸ್ ಆಗಿರಲಿಲ್ಲ ಆ ಸಮಯದಲ್ಲಿ ಒಬ್ಬ ತುಂಬ ಶ್ರೀಮಂತ ರೈತನ ಒಂದು ಮೊಕದ್ದಮೆ ಅವರು ಮುಂದೆ ಬಂತು ನಾವೆಲ್ಲ ಕೋರ್ಟ್ ಕಲ್ ಕುತ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ವಿ ಅವನಿಗೆ ಮೇಂಟೆನೆನ್ಸ್ ಕೊಡಬೇಕು ಎರಡನೇ ಹೆಂಡ್ತಿಗೆ ಅಂದ್ಕೊಂಡು ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಆಗಿ ಹೋಗ್ಬಿಟ್ಟಿತ್ತು ಆಮೇಲೆ ಇವರು ಪರವಾಗಿ ಪ್ರಬಲವಾಗಿ ವಾದ ಮಾಡುವಂಥ ತಮ್ಮಂಥ ಇಂಟೆಲೆಕ್ಚುವಲ್ ಲಾಯರ್ಸ್ ಜೋರ್ ಜೋರಾಗಿ ವಾದ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ರು ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಆ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ವೈಫ್ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಏರ್ ಆನ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ವೈಫ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ವೈಡ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಕೆ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಎ ವೈಡ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಮೈ ಕ್ಲೈಂಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಪೇ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಆಮೇಲೆ ನನ್ನಪ್ಪ ಮತ್ತು ಮಗು ಆಗಿದೆ ಅಲ್ಲ ಅವರಿಗೆ ಮಗು ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಮಗು ಲೆಜಿಟಿಮೇಟ್ ಹೌದಲ್ಲ ಅಲ್ಲಯ್ಯ ಅವರ ಮಗು ಲೆಜಿಟಿಮೇಟ್ ಆದರೆ ತಾಯಿ ಇಲ್ಲೆಜಿಟಿಮೇಟ್ ಹೆಂಗಾಗ್ತಾಳೆ ಕಾನೂನು ಸೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟೀನ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಿಂದೂ ಮ್ಯಾರೇಜ್ ಆಗ್ತದೆ ಅದೇ ಅಂತ ಅದೇ ಹೇಳಿ ನಾವು ಮನುಷ್ಯತ್ವ ಇಟ್ಕೊಂಡು ಜೀವನ ಮಾಡಬೇಕಾಗ್ತದೆ ಇಬ್ಬರೇ ನೀವು ಒಂದು ಇಬ್ಬರು ಬರೀ ಅಂತ ಇಬ್ಬರು ಲಾಯರ್ ಅಂತ ಕರೆದ್ರು ಆ ಕೇಸಿಗೆ ಸಂಬಂಧಪಟ್ಟಿರಲಿಲ್ಲ ಅವರು ಇವ್ರ ಜೊತೆ ಹೋಗಿ ಮಾತಾಡಿ ಒಂದು ಮರದ ಎರಡಲ್ಲಿ ಕೂತ್ಕೊಳ್ಳ್ರಿ ಮಾತಾಡಿಕೊಂಡು ಕಾಂಪ್ರಮೈಸ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಮಧ್ಯಾಹ್ನ ಕಾಂಪ್ರಮೈಸ್ ಆಗಿ ಹೋಗ್ಬಿಡ್ತು ಕೇಸೇ ಮುಗಿದು ಹೋಗ್ಬಿಡ್ತು ಇವ್ರು ಶಾಂತಿ ಫೈಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದಂಥದ್ದು ಇಂಥ ಕಾಮನ್ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಅಪ್ರೋಚನ್ನು ಇಟ್ಕೊಂಡು ಈ ನೆಲಕ್ಕ ಈ ನೆಲದ ನಾಗರಿಕರಿಗೆ ಬೇಕಾಗುವಂಥ ನ್ಯಾಯದಾನ ಮಾಡುವಂಥ ಕಲೆ ಅವರಿಗೆ ಕರಗತ ಆಗಿತ್ತು ಬಹಳ ಬಹಳ ಮಜಾ ಇತ್ತು ಒಂದ್ಸರಿ ನಾನು ಟಿ ಎಸ್ ಇಲಿಯಟ್ ಅನ್ನುವಂಥ ವಿಕ್ಟೋರಿಯನ್ ಪೋಯೆಟ್ ಅನ್ನೋ ಒಂದು ಪೋಯಮ್ ಅನ್ನ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಪೋಯಮ್ಸ್ ಲಿಪ್ಸ್ ಅನ್ಕೊಂಡು ಒಂದು ಎಂಥಾಲಜಿ ಆಫ್ ಪೋಯಮ್ಸ್ ನಾನು ಹಿಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹಿಂಗೆ ಹೊರಟಿದ್ದೆ ಏ ಒಂದು ಪೋಯಮ್ ಹೇಳ ಅಂತ ಬಹಳ ನಗಿಸ್ತಿದ್ರು ತಾವು ಈಗಾಗಲೇ ಅನೇಕ ಸಾಹೇಬರುಗಳು ಹೇಳಿದರು ತುಂಬ ನಗಿಸ್ತಿದ್ರು ಅಂತ ಬೋಪಣ್ಣ ಸಾಹೇಬರು ಹೇಳಿದರು ಚೇರ್ಮನ್ ಆಫ್ ಪಾರ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ಸಿಲಾಗ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಹೋಗುವಾಗ ನಗೆ ಹೋಗ್ತು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಅವ್ರು ಇದಾರೆ ಅಂತ ನಗೆಯನ್ನ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ಕರೆದುಕೊಂಡು ಹೋಗುವಂತಹ ಮಹಾನುಭಾವ ನಗೆಯನ್ನ ನಗೆಯನ್ನ ಚಲ್ಲುವಂತ ಅವರು ಆ ರೀತಿ ಇದ್ರು ತಾವು ಅಷ್ಟೇ ನಗೋದಲ್ಲ ಬೇರೆಯವರು ನಗಬೇಕು ಖುಷಿಯಿಂದ ಇರಬೇಕು ಗೀತೆ ಹೇಳುತ್ತ ಏನು ಸಂತೋಷಂ ಜನಯೇ ಪ್ರಾಜ್ಞ ತದೇವ ಈಶ್ವರ ಪೂಜನ ಜನರೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿನೆಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಇಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಈಶ್ವರ ಪೂಜಾ ಹಿ ಬಿಲೀವ್ ಇಟ್ ಹಿ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸ್ ಇಟ್ ನಾವು ನಗಲ್ಲ ಆದರೆ ಆ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿ ಇಷ್ಟು ಜನರು ಸೇರಿ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಬಹಳ ಖುಷಿಯಾಗೋ ವಿಷಯ ಅಂದರೆ ಇಷ್ಟೊಂದು ಜನರು ಇದೆಲ್ಲ ಕುತ್ಕೊಂಡು ಒಂದು ವರ್ಷ ಕಾಲ ಆಗಿದೆ ಅವ್ರ ಕಾಲ ಆಗಿ ಅಸುನಯ್ಯಿ ಇಷ್ಟು ಹಾಕ್ಕೊಂಡು ನಾವು ಇದೇವಲ್ಲ ಖುಷಿ ಖುಷಿ ಅನಿಸ್ತದೆ ನನಗೆ ತುಂಬ ಖುಷಿ ಅನಿಸ್ತದೆ ಕೊನೆಯದಾಗಿ ಆ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಇಂದ ಫಿಲ್ಮ್ ಆಕ್ಟರ್ ಗುರುದತ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ಯಾಸಾ ಫಿಲ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಚೌಧರಿಕ ಚಾಂದ್ ಫಿಲ್ಮ್ ಸಾಹಿ ಪಿ ಬಿ ಅವ್ರ ಗುಲಾಮ್ ಅವರು ತಿಳ್ಕೊಂಡಾಗ ಕೈಫಿ ಅಜಿಮಿ ಒಂದು ಮಾತನ್ನು ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಗುರುದತ್ತನ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಗುರುದತ್ ರಹನೆ ಕೋ ಸದಾ ದೆಹರ್ಮೆ ಕೋಯಿ ಆತ ನಹಿ ರಹನೆ ಕೋ ಸದಾ ದೆಹರ್ಮೆ ಆತ ನಹಿ ಕೋಯಿ ಲೇಕಿನ್ ಆಪ್ ಜೈಸೆ ಗಯೆ ಜೈಸ್ ಆಪ್ ವಯಸ್ಸೆ ಹಾಂ ಜೈಸೆ ಗಯೆ ವಯಸ್ಸೆ ಜಾತ ಕೋಯಿ ನಹಿ ಅದೇ ರೀತಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಶಾಂತನ ಗೌಡರು ಇವತ್ತು ಅವರು ಇಲ್ಲ ಅವರು ಒಂದನ್ನು ಬಯಸಿದ್ರು ಇದನ್ನು ಹೇಳಿ ನನ್ನ ಮಾತನ್ನು ಮುಕ್ತಾಯ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀನಿ ಈ ಹುಬ್ಬಳ್ಳಿಯ ನ್ಯಾಯಾಲಯವನ್ನು ಓಪನಿಂಗ್ ಸೆರೆಮನಿಗೆ ಬಂದಾಗ ಈಗ ನೀವು ಫೋಟೋದಲ್ಲಿ ನೋಡಿದ್ರಿ ಏನು ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ಅಂದರೆ ಆ ಅಲ್ಲಲ್ಲಿ ಆ ಮೂಲೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಉಗುಳೋದು ಎಲೆ ಅಡಿಕೆ ಹಾಕ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹೊಲ್ಸ್ ಮಾಡೋದು ಇದನ್ನೆಲ್ಲ ಮಾಡಬಾರ್ದು ಅಂತ ಅಂದ್ಕೊಂಡು ಆನರೇಬಲ್ ಜಸ್ಟಿಸ್ ರವಿ ಮನೆಭಟ್ ಅವರು ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ಶಾಂತನ್ ಗೌಡ ಸಾಹೇ ಅವರು ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ಇದನ್ನು ಎಲ್ಲೆ
Dignitaries on the dais, dignitaries on the of the dais, ladies and gentlemen, and the family members of my great friend Munshantan Gada. What else is required when the three sitting judges and two former judges, two chief justices, and many high dignitaries, including the former chief minister, could wait from 10:30 to 4 o'clock? at 3.30, to pay tribute to a great soul is nothing but the great friendship and the great humanity and the great quality of humanity of Mr. Shantan Gowder, which is exhibited in the form of presence of the all the dignities from all over Karnataka and outside Karnataka. Now, all the speakers have recollected their memories and unanimously they mentioned that he was a great woman being a great friend. I can only bird's eye view of his life. There is a lot of things to be said because I was with him at least for more than 30-35 years. I have seen him from very closely. I have seen his family also very closely. With the smile which you see on his face, with a smile coming from his heart and it is ever. He was a very humorous man. With all difficulties also he used to never compromise his uh, smile on his face. What he believed was work is worship. He was a strong believer of uh, Baswana and he always said work is worship. His heart, determination to work hard, honesty and his integrity. Kayato Kailasa was the, one of the his basic principle. Love for the people and how his magnetic power, his magnetic power attracted the people. I can quote the example from his students' lives to, to till the last. When he was a student of a law, and some of his friends must be here in the audience, and uh, those who have practiced also must be known, knowing that Mr. Ajapa was one of the great principles of a law college then. Though he was a very tough and a strict principal, but Mr. Shantan Gowder, he was not just a student, but he developed a friendship. They were good friends with all the, even all the teachers. That apart, when he was a junior of Hire Gowder, and within a span of one year, he became inseparable from their family, even today. Their family remembers him as a part of their family. Second, when he joined the chamber of Justice Shuraj party, Justice Shuraj party himself mentioned, while the, and just in the casual talk, who should, how, what should be the junior and what should be the senior. Shuraj party mentioned, senior should feel that he is assisted and senior, junior should feel that he is guided. He made a reference to Justice Shantan Gowder because the quality of Shantan Gowder was that he used to be in the chamber of Justice Shivaraj Patel before Justice Shivaraj Patel came. And he used to leave the chamber after completing the last file of the next day, completely prepared with notes and all. And the next day when Shivaraj Patel used to see it, it was a complete information about that case. So that was the assistance he was getting. And fortunately, Justice Ravi Manimat, who worked in the same chamber, they were together for some time. This was the quality. That is why he became inseparable part of Justice Shivaraj Patil's family. A day before yesterday, there was a small function. Sujata, Justice Sujata is here, where Shivaraj Patil. I mentioned that I am going to this function. Less than a tear in his eyes, the feeling he expressed. That is how the relation was with the senior and junior. It is not just senior and junior. He became a part of that family. Every occasion, every decision was taken with the concurrence of the 
Justice Sura Mohan Chandra. Now, quality of a man is measured. He is love for the North Karnataka Justice uh, Maheshwari mentioned about Dharwad. North Karnataka, he was the first person to organize the law conference, lawyers conference in Dharwad. His motto was that the professional, but the advocates in Dharwad, at the North Karnataka region, must guess best person and they should attend. Like Nani Paliki Wala, Swarabji, and uh, the Ram Jaitmalaj, they all addressed here in Darwan. And for the advantage, that was a great advantage, and he arranged that. There was a small instance of that particular function, which he mentioned to me, that as a chairman of the Bar Council, he fell short of rupees 5 lakhs for the arranging this function. And he met the then Chief Minister J. H. Party for the sum of sanction of amount. He went to his uh, home office where he met the chief minister. Chief minister himself for being a lawyer, former lawyer, he asked, what is the amount you require? He said, only 5 lakhs. No, you are arranging a state level conference, only 5 lakhs you are asking. He asked his secretary, score that 5 lakhs and make it for 10 lakhs. And the day on which he made a request, 5 lakhs was sanctioned and the remaining 5 lakhs was again sanctioned after a few days. Look at this, there after what happened. After the conference, Mr. Shantan Gowder went with a canolo who to say thanks along with a check of rupees 5 lakhs and said that our function is the 5 lakh rupees was sufficient and the remaining amount is the excess amount and he will return to the government. The Chief Minister amazed that there is a person who can return the amount received from the government and in public function at the Davangere, he openly mentioned this is a man or look at the honesty and his integrity of keeping the account my pay to pay and returning the money to the government. He is the first person I have seen in my political career. This was the quality of uh, Mr. Shantan Gowder. I will give judicial example, one example. When he was hearing a bail matter, it was a case of a theft of a a Shivalinga from a uh, temple. It was a court Shivalinga. It is a Krishna Shivalinga very worth of several and monumental value. When he was hearing the bail matter, he saw the proceeding and found that the Shivalinga was thrown in the small pond and it had remained there and without any security. He postponed the hearing of the bail matter, went to that place because it happens to be his native place, Neto Taluka. He went there, called the police, got the master duck and put it in the security. It was very monumental value and very, very valuable article, uh, valuable uh, linga that was restored in the provision under the security and kept in a shed. This was the concern of a person who not only passing an order but protecting the properties also. Now, as a judge, how he conducted? I will, most of you will agree that no junior or no senior ever felt discomfort in his court. And every junior came with a smiling, whether he lost the case or whether he won the case. And all the senior unanimously, he, they appreciated his approach because it was pure human approach in every judgment. All of the judges have recollected those memories, even in the Supreme Court judgment, no need to refer to many of his judgments. And this is Rupanna was mentioning that he closely came to know when he was heading a three judges. But I will say that was the landmark judgment. All the three judges wrote their judgment and all the three of them went to the Supreme Court. That was the landmark judgment which was written on the NTC defection law. And the pain I know, I know as I was a colleague, I know the pain that they had taken and wonderful judgment that they had written. This was the quality. They were together in a particular chamber, writing, discussing overnight and writing a judgment. This was the con concern of the person. Now, look at his um, popularity, not only in Karnataka, even in Kerala also. One of the, his swearing in ceremony at the Trivendram, you believe or not, entire hall was full beyond capacity and this was the all people have, who have travelled from Karnataka for to participate is in um, the swearing in ceremony. And there was one issue which was going on between the press and the judiciary and which was lingering there. 
If the man, after swearing in, immediately he resolved that issue. This is the quality of the mediation by the Shantan Gaudar. This is the contribution. See, series of, there are series of his uh, contribution to the society series. And his human being. And lastly, I can put, I have seen the family very closely. His love for his parents, particularly his mother, was immense. His mother was inseparable with him. Wherever he had gone, whether other members are there or not, mother used to be there with him. Both used to be so closely, they were only as a friends and never as a mother and son. Same thing it was with the, his better half. I have, I have so many occasions. He had addressed Madam and he gave same status as anybody on par with him. And a great love for his daughter, daughter-in-law and son. Particularly, he never treated his family members as only members of the family, but he treated all of them as a friend. His conversation that I have seen, I was jealous of that conversation because the way in which he was used to converse, keep everyone in happy, keep everyone in smiling with all the things. And he had a time for family, he had a time for friends, he had a time for it. Lastly, I will mention, when he was ill and the last talk I had, he said, may I will come and will again sit. This is unfortunate that may never came and we missed him thoroughly. And that is what we are saying. He lives in our heart. Wherever he is there, he is always there with us. And it is a great soul. And with one example of Bar Council also I mentioned that he was twice a member of Bar Council. He arranged, a, he became a chairman. But Bar Council never became, in, it became an inseparable part of Justice Shantan Gaudar because always any issue with the Bar Council, with the judiciary, he is the only one who became the link between the judiciary and the advocate. And always all the chief chief justices look forward his assistance and the help in all the issues. Thank you very much for celebrating his life. He was a great soul. We remember him and we remember forever. Thank you. True inspiration, great family man and a wonderful motivator. Thank you, Honorable Mr. Justice Subhash Biyari, former Judge High Court of Karnataka, for your concluding remarks. Uh, before we leave the dignitaries on the dais, it's our pleasure to honor them. Uh, I would request Honorable Mr. Justice Vinit Saran to kindly accept a memento. Uh, I would request Mr. the President, Mr. Suresh Hudegati, KL Patil, and Ashok Kalyan Shetty to do the honors. But we will also take a look at the memento. The memento is of Mahatma Basaveshwara. Way back in the 12th century, the first parliament was a uh, foundation was laid here in Karnataka. So the Advocates Association has carefully thought Mohan M. Shantan Gaudar firmly believed in the values of Mahatma Vasveshwara and that's it. So let's give a round of applause and thank Honorable Mr. Justice Vinit Saran for his presence. And uh, thank you very much, sir, for taking time off and being here, our chief guest. I would now request Honorable Mr. Justice Dinesh Maheshwari uh, to kindly accept a memento from the Vice President, yes. Harish Maigur, accompanied by B.S. Kamte and uh, V.M. Shilavan. Along with the memento, there is also a book of Vachana in English, because uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, he also believed in the values of Vachana. Thank you, Honorable Mr. Justice Dinesh Maheshwari, for your presence. I will now request Honorable Mr. Justice B. R. Ramakrishna Gavai to accept a memento from the Secretary Sadi Gudwala, accompanied by Lakshman Mantgani and Harsh Desai.
now request uh, Honorable Mr. Justice uh, A.S. Bopanna to kindly accept a member from the Treasurer A.M. Mali Patil accompanied by Mr. Patil and Dinesh Kulkarni. gratitude and thankfulness for all these people and uh, who have worked uh, for all these weeks and all the guests who have come on the dais, off the dais and all the department that have helped us out, the administration, the district administration, the police, police department, the engineering department, the registry, the judicial registry and all the law lawyers from different parts of Karnataka have come here. We thank one and all. Please do not mind because we have the paucity of time and time. I hope, I do not want to take more time. So I thank one and all off the dais, on the dais and all the dignitaries and the invitees that have come. Thank you one and all for making this uh, program a celestial blessing one. Thank you one and all. That was indeed short and sweet, uh, Ms. Shiva, uh, Sima Shivanai. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I would request the bar members, advocates and others to kindly move to the right-hand side of the stage. There are a lot of counters, so not to worry. Everything is taken care of. Enjoy your food and head back to your respective destinations safely and securely. Let's give a round of applause for the dignitaries for their presence. And all the others also can move to that. And all of you, please take care and let Mohan Justice M. Shant, Mohan M. Shant, live forever. Thank you very much. Namaskar. <laughs>